Hey guys, Mac here of Bound for Nowhere. This is part two of a three-part series covering our time on the John Muir Trail. If you have not seen the first video, we recommend that you take a step back and watch it before watching this one. But if you're ready for part two, it's time to enjoy. Day six is done. Um, we are camped by a water source, and this is where you would go if you were going to VVR. You would take the ferry from here, but we are not. We're gonna press on in the morning. Um, but today was a good day, I would say. We were both in really high spirits, and it was our first day without Sissy, so it was interesting to see kind of our rhythm. I will say that I think I could do better drinking water and eating on like my own free will. So tomorrow I'm gonna to try to be better about that. But otherwise, we did 14.7 miles. We were on trail for 10 hours and nine minutes. But we did, we instituted a new policy around lunchtime at about halfway. We had a siesta, so we stopped for about an hour, made some coffee, had a heavy snack. And when I say heavy snack, I had like three portions of salami, no, pepperoni. And, a serve, and like a portion for us is about 300 calories. We have some leftover and it was tasting really delicious, so I ate it. Um, our lowest point was 7,976 feet and our highest was 10,817 feet. And today we went over Silver Pass. It was really nice, very snowy on our climb and then the descent wasn't as bad. And then we had about four river fords, only three of them did we notice and only two of that two of them only two of them we actually had to get wet in any way shape or form so all in all i would say a good day i think tomorrow we've got a test ahead of us oh i did have a craving come up today i want a cerveza so bad if i yeah so anyways if anybody could bring me a cerveza that would be great one of our water crossings today was actually, it wasn't bad because it was rocks that you could skip across the whole way, but it was quite possibly one of the most beautiful waterfalls I have ever seen. We kind of traced the water source all the way down from the pass. And instead of it being, you know, a creek or a river that's coming through dirt, it was all just sliding on rock. And the waterfall itself almost looked like it was designed by Walt Disney or something. But for dinner tonight, we had Three Sisters stew, which was rice, beans, quinoa, corn, and zucchini. It was delicious. And then Owen for dessert had, was it Bounty? Is that what you had? I think so. Mounds? Bounty. Mounds. Mounds. Yeah. Bounty is not American. Mounds. And then I had a super melted Twix bar, and it was delicious. Hey guys, today is the official halfway mark for us. So day seven is today. Um, so yeah, we hit over a hundred miles. I think it was like 106 miles because the trail from Yosemite Valley to Mount Whitney is 111 miles. So. 211. 211. <laughs> There's a really big difference. So yeah, we hit 106 miles today. Um, potentially a little over. We don't actually know where we are so um, I'll give you the stats and then I'll go over the details of the day. So we went 15.8 miles um, in 11 hours and 15 minutes with a one hour siesta. I will come back to that. Our highest elevation was 10,876 feet. Our lowest was 7,943 feet. And that is with an ascent of 4,200 feet feet of elevation. So a lot of climbing today. And on my, I've been tracking, so I have a Sunto watch. I've been tracking all of our movements and we did just about the same coming down in elevation as we did going up. But the day started out with a lot of switchbacks. Um, a guy the other day was warning us about them and said it took him an hour and a half just to come down them. It took us an hour and a half to go up them. Not bragging, but 
feel pretty good about that. So this, the day started out with a 2,000 foot climb, then we came down about 1,000 feet and then had to go back up 2,000 um, for Selden Pass. And there was a lake just below, about 500-ish feet below. And uh, we stopped there for our siesta. Oh, and I were both struggling a big time. We were like stumbling around so tired. So we decided to stop for an hour and we made coffee and um, had, again, probably three servings of pepperoni each. And then when we got back on trail, we felt like new people. So I think that the siesta is a tried and true trick that we will continue to use probably throughout the rest of the trail. And then um, after the pass, we just kind of started to come down again in elevation, about a thousand feet. And we had a water crossing that we thought was gonna be the end of our day, but we weren't exactly sure where we were on the map and decided to continue. It turns out we were in the right place to stop for the night, but we started coming downhill and there was no way we were gonna go back up to it. So we had to stop because we realized that we were not gonna be able to camp by water which is what we've been doing every night thus far. So we had easy access to rinsing off, filling up our water bottles, especially getting water for making dinner. So Owen had to go down this really, really steep um, embankment to get down to a creek at the end of one of our switchbacks as we were working our way down. So thanks to him, dinner was made possible because he was willing to go down the hill. Um, but yeah, and then we've made it to this really beautiful meadow for the night. Um, feel pretty good. Feet are kind of achy. I think we each have about like one blister. Um, but otherwise we're doing really well. Tomorrow we're going to be doing our last resupply. Um, we're not too far away from it. So we came even closer to it than we were planning to. And, uh, that's MTR, your trail ranch. Um, but otherwise things I think are going really well. This kind of feels like a training trip. Owen and I are ex swimmers and once or twice a year, we would have to go on training trips and it just kind of feels like you wake up and you know you gotta put in a lot of hard work to go to bed and I look forward to dinner every night. <laughs> but uh, for dinner tonight, we had three sisters stew again. I had a Snickers bar and Owen had a Twix bar. Today we had a bunch of water crossings as well. Um, past two days, we've had a lot of water crossings, a lot deeper um, and wider than we have had probably up until now. So our shoes are <coughs> wet very frequently. And a couple of the streams that we crossed had abundant trout. It was so cool to see them. And then we walked through this meadow that was kind of flooded and there was trout in the meadow. It's kind of crazy to see the way that this super heavy snow year is kind of affecting the terrain. Not that we know anything different, but it's been really interesting to see all the water. I do believe that that is it for today. All right, so our day started about a mile and a half roughly above um, near to ranch, which is our final resupply. So we woke up a little bit later this morning because we didn't have that far to walk and we knew that they didn't open until eight. So we got there at roughly eight um, and worked on our resupply. I feel like I need to just make this publicly aware. Muir Trail Ranch is very, I want to say no frills, but I feel like they are a resupply for through hikers despite themselves. They just, we really did not feel welcome. There's no bathroom. They kind of just hand you your food and there's this little table off to the side where you can work on it. I will say the guests were far more friendly than the actual people working there, including the dogs, which is weird. So yeah, it was kind of a bummer because you feel like you work really hard to get there and you're really excited to um, see a little bit of civilization anyways. And yeah, just not really met with any sort of warmth. So we uh, were there for, I think it was about an hour and a half. We had food for three people, which ended up being two buckets worth of food that we got from Zero Day Resupply, and which was awesome. It was there, everything was in place exactly like it was supposed to be, um, but we are down a person. So it was kind of interesting. We had to sort through and rebag our food, get rid of all the extra packaging so we could 
get rid of that trash before we left. Um, we were able to donate a lot of food um, to some buckets of extra food for people. Specifically, there was this uh, English couple there that substantially had less calories than they needed. So it was really nice to see our food go to people who really needed it. Um, so after we finished there, so we ended up having about eight days, not about, we have eight days worth of food in our pack when we left and had a lot of elevation to climb. And it was staggeringly more difficult to hike with our super heavy packs. But the good news is it's only going to get lighter from here. Um, so we took our siesta a couple miles in, which we ended up eating one of our extra backpacker meals, which was very good fuel for the rest of the day because it was kind of a steady climb all the way through. Um, here are the stats. We did 15.1 miles in nine hours and 10 minutes. Uh, our lowest point was 7,671 feet. Our highest is 10,026 feet. And um, we ended our day just past the ranger station, kind of down a little ways, about like a mile and a half, two miles um, from Mirror Pass, which is going to go down tomorrow. And we stopped and talked to the ranger who's staying there. And apparently we have about six and a half miles of snow ahead of us once we get up there, which should be exciting. But maybe there won't be mosquitoes. So there is that to look forward to. But once we got here to camp, we set up the tent and saw a little bit of refuge. Then we got out and made dinner and it was terrifying. And now we're back here. We're gonna have dessert. We just had mac and cheese for dinner. And I think that we both have Snickers almond bar seasonings. You guys are just like the best. Um, for dinner tonight. And we're gonna lighten the load because we got a big climb ahead of us tomorrow. All right, see you guys then. Hey guys, um, I'm gonna speak a little bit louder because we are at the intersection of, of multiple creeks and streams right now. Um, but it's the end of day nine. Today was really hard. We did about, I guess it was 15 miles even, but we tackled Mirror Pass today, which was really exciting. Um, so we were just below Evolution Lake this morning when we woke up and it was, way to wake up was just to go straight up. Some pretty intense switchbacks to start off the day, but it was, such a beautiful pass. It just felt like non-stop lakes. I feel like a good way to describe it looked like Austria almost. Um, but it was about six and a half miles of continuous snow through the pass. Four and a half on the side that we were going up and then two miles going down on the back side. And we got to stop at the mirror hut which was really cool for a little bit just to catch our breath before heading down. It was a little early in the day to stop for a siesta, but we just chatted with some of the other hikers, all PCT hikers, I believe, that were up there at the time. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it was so itchy. So then we started to head down and it was, I think, probably the softest snow we've been in yet. Um, and the tracks were super narrow and you have to put one foot in front of the other and it was really slow going. It's just really slushy at that rate. But we got to do our first slide down because it was multiple tiers kind of coming down. But one of the last ones, we actually got to slide down. It was so fun. Um, but then shortly after that, we found, I don't know what the name of the lake was, one of the ones down from your pass to stop for a little siesta. I think we both really needed it. Really tired after trudging through. I think it was like 10 miles at that rate when we stopped. Um, a lot of which had been, six of which had been under snow. So then it was really steep all downhill from there. And we are just south of the Conte Ranger Station for the night. But um, we did a bunch of little river crossings today, some 
surrounded by ice, I'm not. Owen took a good spill today off of a log. Um, the camera of which we're using to film this almost got very wet. Speaking of which, we've been having a lot of problems with the camera. I guess it shouldn't surprise us. We've had it for a while, but it seems like the motor might be going out in the lens of which is being used right now for this video. And all the buttons have stopped working periodically on the camera. So hopefully they'll take care of us through the rest of this trip. Luckily, we're not having any problems with my film camera. Imagine that. Um, but anyways, tonight for dinner, we had a breakfast skillet um, by Mountain House. It's delicious. I highly recommend it. Um, and Owen was not feeling so hot. We don't know if it was water or something that he ate, but I think he's starting to feel better now. I hope he's starting to feel better now. He's the one behind the camera. But, um, and then I had Reese's Pieces for dessert. All right, day nine in the books. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can pull up the stats. My watch was not connecting with the app, but we will see. And it did. So we did 15 miles in 11 hours and 30 minutes. It was a trudge for sure today. And our highest elevation was 11,913 feet. Our lowest was 8,832 feet. We ascended 2,356 feet. And I do remember seeing on my watch that we descended 3,300 feet today. So we actually came down more than we went up, despite the fact that it did not feel that way at all. But yeah, long day. I'm exhausted. But that's it. Hey guys, day 10 is done. Um, while I have these stats pulled up and before they disappear, I am going to read them off to you. So we got a little bit of a later start today. 6.25. We woke up about 30 minutes later than we normally do just because we're tired. And our plan was to have a shorter day. So according to my watch, we did about 14 miles, but according to the map, I think we did about 16 miles. Is that right, Owen? Yep. Yeah, so we did about 16 miles in 10 hours and 42 minutes. And let's see. It's calculating our route, which I don't need right now. Okay, so our highest uh, elevation was 12,195 feet. And our lowest was 8,294 feet. We ascended 4,183 feet. We descended 1,568 feet. And I do believe, oh, and it claims that it's going to take me two hours to recover. I think it'll be more than that. So we started the day out with a plan of going just shy of Mather Pass. Um, we wanted to kind of set ourselves up well to do the pass tomorrow morning. Um, and we had to do a lot of climbing, obviously. This was our second highest ascent of the trail, other than the first day, actually, which was almost 6,000 feet of elevation gain. But we had to do the Golden Staircase, which was tough. It was really hot when we hit it about 10 a.m. A lot of switchbacks for two miles um, coming from the valley kind of up to the start of where the pass starts to kind of really build up around to a couple of lakes. So our plan was to camp by those lakes. We got there and we kind of hemmed and hawed about it. We didn't really find a place to camp, so we kept walking. And then the next thing we knew, we kind of were not anywhere near where we could camp. And we just decided, we're like, you know what? We're just going to do the pass today. Because it was, I think we took our siesta around one. And then we're back on trail at two. Oh, also, so resupply at Muir Trail Ranch. Um, we were running out of coffee. Coffee has been our thing during siesta. And so I decided to check to see if there was any coffee. And there was some Vietnamese coffee, which we really, really love. So we had some Vietnamese coffee today, which was delicious. So after that, we conquered the pass. And I will say quite possibly the hardest pass we've had yet. It was incredibly steep. We were hitting it after it had been baking in the sun all day. And the snow was so, like the softest we've seen yet. And that side of the pass, the side that we had to climb, was the side that was holding all of the snow. Oh my gosh, yeah, it was 
it was bad. There was parts where it was so steep that you were like, this foot has to hold because if it doesn't, I'm just going to go sliding all the way back down. And sure enough, it would just give way and you would just sink down. It just felt like a treadmill for a while. But when we finally got to the top of the pass, um, it was a very rejoiceful moment. It was also our tallest pass yet. And it was so steep on the other side and hardly any snow, which was good because we've been seeing a lot of snow lately. Um, but so then we worked our way down here to where we are at camp. And our end elevation is, just a minute, 11,617 feet. So this is officially the tallest um, camp spot we've had yet. And there are no bugs. No bugs. So um, it's pretty nice. We might try to make this happen again. We will not make the call on that until we survive the night because it might be pretty cold um, because we have camped at lower elevations and water has frozen. So we will see what happens in the morning. But right now we're just pretty, pretty thankful for the fact that there's no bugs. Um, but for dinner, we had mashed potatoes and a chicken fajita bowl by Mountain House. And I will say Mountain House kind of blowing me away. The food is delicious. It's everything I want to eat. <laughs> so that was really good. And then I had a Snickers. No one had an Amish for dessert. All right. See you after day 11.